Hi there. Welcome back to Waxing On. It's Wednesday and today is classic rock with a touch of blues. Uh, we're looking at an artist and I kind of touched on his work way back in the first season when we were looking at an album and featuring uh, Delbert McClinton and John Mayle. And today we're just going to look a little more at John Mayle. Uh, it's kind of a follow-up to what I did a, maybe a couple of months ago on Van Morrison where we just looked at, I mean, the vast catalog that these artists have put out and what a successful career they've had. Now, John Mayle had been around since the, the mid-60s. Um, I mean, gosh, he's well known as a great blues musician, songwriter, player. Mainly well known, though, for the people he's had go through his band, especially the guitar players. I mean, uh, obviously, Eric Clapton in one of the early versions of the Blues Breakers. And, I mean, what can you say about Clapton? We had Mick Taylor played guitar for him, went off, and was also playing with the Rolling Stones for a while. I think a couple of these albums uh, actually feature Mick Taylor that I have with me today. And uh, John McVie played bass with him. We talked about him not too long ago with the uh, Fleetwood Mac albums. He's had a lot of players go through. And surprisingly, up until, I'm going to say maybe the last six months or less than a year, Mayo was still out touring and playing concerts. He's just recently retired from touring. And I think he's like 88 years old. And he was still out there going. Um, some of the albums I have, I just want to show you a few of them here because really the, the key thing with him is not unlike what we had with Van Morrison, I don't think he's ever had a hit. Well, certainly not in the last five decades. Uh, there was a bit of a hit when Clapton was with him, they had one tune. But I mean, on the whole, no, he's not getting a lot of airplay anywhere. Uh, some of the FM stations carried blues, might have featured him a bit, but really, he was not on the radio. Um, he wasn't guesting on a lot of TV shows, and yet he was well known. My first, uh, I guess my first introduction to him was at a friend's house, and his sister had the album USA Union. And she had a lot of great albums that we used to dig into, Bob Dylan, Freewheel, and uh, Let It Be by the Beatles. Good record collection, but this one, USA Union. I think she had Hot Rats by Mag or Frank Zappa as well, if you can imagine. Um, sounds like my collection now. But uh, I went out and I didn't really buy anything of his. I was aware of it. I listened to that album. I liked what I heard. But I didn't really buy much until, I'm going to say it was into the mid-70s. And the first John Mayle album was Moving On, which we talked about in that episode back in the, the first season. I picked up a number of albums here. Just to give you some idea of the you know, catalog he's got. Here's one. Again, special price. I mean, some of these are on discount albums, right? If you just know what you're looking for on there. Archives to 80s. Uh, what else? Oh, here's one there. Bear Wires. John Mayle and the Blues Breakers. Again, another special price set. So, discount bin. And on here, oh, we've got John Mayle, uh, Mick Taylor playing guitar. So Mick Taylor on this one. He's also started to include, uh, in this one, include some other musicians. We've got uh, saxophone, we've got cornet, we've got, uh, well, tenor and barrow sax. So he's starting to branch out. This isn't quite at the stage of jazz, blues, fusion, but he's getting into it with bare wires. Uh, which brings me up to the two I have on 8-track that I picked up. This how far back it was, I mean mid-70s, we've got the Jazz Blues Fusion featuring Blue Mitchell on trumpet. And kind of went hand in hand with that was his next one, 10 years ago. Now, I could read you song lists off here, but is it going to make any difference? Sitting there thinking, driving till the break of day, better pass you by. He hasn't had a hit. Most people aren't going to recognize him. But people still turn out. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. Um, I think it was the album Wake Up Call. So we're talking probably mid-90s. Uh, John Mayle came to the blue, or Blues Festival. Actually, it was Jazz Festival. But they used to break it down that one day was big band, next day was, was all blues. And he was at the Ottawa Jazz Festival, the Blues Day. And they par packed the park. And I'm thinking, here's somebody doesn't do TV, isn't on the radio, 
Uh, it's only word of mouth, or if you picked up the albums, you'd even know who he was, and he's packing the park. This is coming in what happened with Van Morrison. I mean, here's this guy playing to sell out crowds, and you wonder why. There's no big management, no publicity going into it, you know, building him up. Uh, he's not doing everything you would think people do when they're on tour. And yet he's still getting people to come out and follow him. They've heard by word of mouth. They've listened to other people's albums. They've shared the music. And he can, up until 88, he's still selling out concerts. It's not all about the big promotion. It's not all about radio play. It's not all about uh, publicity. It's about the honesty in playing music that really communicates with people and just how successful he was at that. And he featured a lot of great players. I think guitar player during that one was uh, Coco Montoya. During the tour, I had seen him on. I saw him uh, twice in Ottawa. And I got a great John Mayall story, and I don't know if I told it in the first show, but some of you may have heard it before. Um, after the concert, he just finished playing, comes back out on stage, he's signing autographs, he's chatting with the people. And my daughter was there, she wasn't very old at this point, and he comes off stage, come down and talk to her. Now, remember, this is the mid-90s. There's no digital cameras, there's no cell phones we're taking pictures with. We're working old cameras with film in them, right? I've already snapped a few shots during the concert. I snapped the shot while he was signing the autograph. Um, comes down, he's talking to my daughter, and I get all ready to take a picture. I'm out of film, man. No film. Man, if I had the camera, if I had the, you know, digital, yeah, we'd just erase a couple real quick. They'd be gone, snap a shot. I mean, here's a chance for me to have a blues legend from my era and my daughter together. I mean, wouldn't that have been a shot? And here I am stuck with an old camera because of the era. No film. Took a picture up here, still got that one. But it's just one of those things. But that's just the kind of artist he was. He would take the time to come out and talk to people. He'd take the time to come out and sign autographs. A uh, couple of other albums that came out after, I'll just show you some I picked up after the uh, uh, Wake Up Call. Sense of Place. We've got uh, Blues for the Lost Days. Spinning Coin. And what do we got here? Uh, Chicago Line. And these are just some of the ones I just grabbed. I mean, I got a slew of them here. And again, not a hit on any album. Nothing you're going to know off the radio. You need to share it with your friends. You need to get online and check it out. And again, this guy's been going for over 50, almost 60 years, man. He's been going. And putting out great music, great musicians playing along with him. Uh, if you haven't heard him, you owe it to yourself to check it out. Streaming networks, absolutely. Go to his website. I mean, he's got albums for sale there that he sells on the website. You can even get autographed pictures from him. It's like six bucks for international. You know, a piece of history while the guy's still alive. I mean, he's 88. That's pretty old for a musician. And again, to be still out there doing what he was doing, taking that music to the people and the people responding by selling out those concerts that he went to. So if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, hard copies. Obviously, some of mine I picked up on sale bins. You never know where they're going to show up. You never know who's going to have them. Streaming networks always are a great favorite because it has mainly, or it has most times, the whole catalog for these different artists. Anyways, that gets you through hump day here. Middle of the week, gets you through the rest of the week listening to some great John Mayall. It'll put a smile on your face. It'll kind of make the rest of the week go faster. That's it for Wednesday. John Mayall, check him out. We'll see you on Friday. Till then, everybody take care. Stay safe. See you Friday.